Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Prisdale, and today I will be smoking the Stillwell Star Holiday 2023 Limited Edition Toro Cigar. Pipe tobaccos coming from Cornell and Deal are Cavendish Burley and Virginia tobaccos, very similar to the number one without the sweetened cap or Dolce Cabeza, as they wrote in the interview with Steve Saka on Half Wheel on this particular cigar. It also features one of my favorites, an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper over a Mexican San Andres Cotivo binder, as well as Nicaragua tobaccos inside of the fillers. But once again, no sweetened cap because Saka describes this as already having some pretty sweet tobaccos in the pipe blend. And the cigar he best describes as a nice cup of hot chocolate with toasted marshmallows. And they produce 32,000 cigars, boxes of 13, I believe. And the price point on it was about $15 MSRP, $15.30. So not a very difficult barrier to entry. It's a ton of leather, hot cocoa, marshmallowy kind of creaminess that's on the cigar. The leather is abundant, but it's integrated in like this delicious way where it hits kind of the sides of your palate. You get all that acid, all the sweetness. Retro Hill is very tame to start off with. It does not hit you in the face with any kind of pepper on the retro whatsoever off the initial lighting. Really well enveloped on the palate. It has texture, it has layers. There's also a woody component to it, like a nice hickory or mesquite wood. I know that he best described it as hot chocolate with a little bit of marshmallow, like toasted marshmallows with it. And that is very on point. It is that. But what it really reminds me of is the chocolate frosty from Wendy's. Like it's part slushy, but part milkshake. And it's, you know, it's got that, that really nice maltiness to it. The pepper on the retro hell has increased dramatically. We are now at Steve Saka level eight, <laughs> Steve Saka level seven, but it's carried by all of this creamy maltiness. Once again, going back to my Wendy's Frosty. For those of you out there that aren't familiar with the Wendy's Frosty, just look it up online. You can see what the chocolate Frosty looks like. It looks like a slushy more than a milkshake. And it has a lot of maltiness to it that creates this texture and flavor on your palate that is very unique in the Frosty game or in the milkshake game. It sits on your palate. It, if this is lengthy, it is long, the Virginia tobaccos, the Cavendish, like all of that just, it, it blends so well with the cigar. There's even like maybe a little bit of licorice to it. Not necessarily like an anise flavor, but you know when you bite into a licorice stick and you, you always have like a residual kind of licorice flavor for a little bit that you get on your palate? That's what this really has. It has the black pepper, the white pepper, the licorice, the leather, as well as the malty chocolate. And it's absolutely fantastic. This is this is my favorite still well started day, just in the opening. Like it's it's so deep in flavor, it's so concentrated, it's got so much going on to it. And when I smoke pipe tobacco, I always get this dry effect in the back end of my palate and throat. This doesn't have it just yet, so I'm really happy about that because one of the things that I don't like about pipe tobacco as opposed to cigars, and this is just my limited observation in smoking pipe tobacco, is that a lot of pipe tobacco dries out my like esophagus and my palate a lot. It dries out like the back of my throat. So I, I constantly have to drink water and I constantly have to like follow up pipe tobacco with uh, something because of the fact that it, it is very drying to my my palate. So delicious that I decided to make myself a nice little cocktail. You might be asking, what is the cocktail that you made? Well, I thought the perfect pairing with this particular cigar and having flavors on it that you really don't taste very often on any individual cigar, but much less in a collection of cigars. Um, the best cocktail I feel is that to pair with the cigar is actually a cocktail that when DJ was out here, from Pick Jimmy Cigar Reviews. So we were out having dinner at one of the signature steakhouses in the Las Vegas area by the name of Herbs and Rye. For those of you out there that are familiar with Herbs and Rye, it is a landmark location in Vegas, one that we are very proud as locals to say has existed for the last 15 years and continues to turn out great products by way of classic cocktails and great steaks. Looking on the menu and he was like, what the hell do I order? This menu is massive and a lot of these classic cocktails I've never heard of. And I'm just like, Lou, dude, you gotta order a Vucare. Vucare is one of my absolute favorite classic cocktails. I've 
believe I've spoken about it before, and this Vucare right here is a prime example of that. I like to do a split base of Vucare, so I use one ounce of rye whiskey, did a little Frey Ranch rye to make it a little bit more Nevada, right? One ounce of Hennessy VSOP cognac, because I love Hennessy VSOP in cocktails, I think that it's very delicious. An ounce of sweet vermouth, a couple of dashes of bitters, you could use Angostura if you want. Any aromatic bitter will do, and that's to complement the pipe tobacco, of course. Aromatic tobacco, aromatic bitters. Get the two? Similarities, right? And then one dash of Benedictine is what the standard recipe calls for. If Benedictine is unavailable in your area because it is more of an obscure liqueur, obscure liqueur, didn't mean for that to rhyme, um, you can go with another obscure one in yellow chartreuse. You can also utilize things like Grand Marnier, things like Strega, things that have Campari even if you wanted to. Traditional recipe though calls for Benedictine, so that's what we got going on in here. B&B Brandy is another uh, product done by the same makers of Dom Benedictine. So if you're familiar with B&B, you're pretty much familiar with Benedictine and you can use that as well. It's really just a matter of the herbs, the bark, the roots, the specific recipe that they utilize in Benedictine kind of elevates a lot of the flavors that are in this cocktail. So although chartreuse is a good substitution, you at the end of the day are only supposed to be doing a dash. So you're not doing an ounce, you're not doing a half of an ounce, you're not doing three quarters of an ounce, it's just a dash. And that imparts very little to the cocktail, it's just more of like your salt and pepper, kind of like your bitters, right? And that's a great example and a great parallel to the cigar, right? This isn't a pipe tobacco cigar, although there is pipe tobacco sprinkled in it. And with that pipe tobacco, Steve Saka has harnessed the ability to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper to what he's cooking up. Cheers. This is an absolutely fantastic cigar, absolutely box worthy stick. And I think that the concentration of flavors in the final third are just mimicking the second third in their abundance, in their harmony. They mix together very, very well with my Vucare, which is almost gone now. But absolutely a box worthy cigar as are most of the recent ones that I've had from Steve and Dunbarton Tobacco Trust. They just keep on turning out winners every single time. So I would just like to say thank you to everybody for liking, commenting, subscribing, and continuing to grow the community here at Master Your Ash. I look forward to catching you again for another Stillwell Star, Holiday Limited Edition, and Vucare Review.